This is an example of how complex this can be with our new methods of D by D cutting. On this unit, we have a 17 foot D by D prescription for Doug fur and all true furs. That means any larger tree within 17 feet of a smaller tree, if it's a cut species, will be cut. Over here we have the example. If you have a lot of trees here, you should only have certain cut ones. One of the rules we have on this specific sale is we have a 24 inch maximum DSH. Down here at the base of the tree is where you measure DSH. At the top, you go six inches up. This tree here, if you look at it, has a big cat face in it. We call this a cat face, it's rot. So there really isn't a good rule when we're doing DBH. We either take it in two different places to estimate the actual DBH, which is four and a half feet for DSH. We don't have a specified rule for filling in this space. So what we have to do, get the dust here. Officially they are measuring, that's half a foot right there. Up to here, right here. And then I'm gonna pick a, I was explaining, to get DSH is not a simple task because it's almost too subjective for us. We've got half a foot, these are tents. Go up half a foot from the top, there we go, I've got a line somewhere here. And then I need a horizontal measurement around the tree, which means I need to go straight around this thing, you get it, and take the measurement. So, in order to get it straight at this level, this tree is actually a pretty good one because it doesn't have a bunch of brush and stuff here. But some trees, this is, is very highly subjective. We have a maximum DSH on this unit of 24 inches. This tree happens to be 23.7. Now, if somebody were to go just a hair lower or a hair higher, that can make a big difference. But, that's how it is. If it is 24 inches, that tree, you gotta pretend it isn't even there. Pretend it doesn't have anything to do with anything. Just like that cedar there. Same thing we do with the species that are not cut species. Although what you gotta look at on these is whether they're three feet away at the SH again. So the SH right here on the top side, sweep it around so you got to do horizontal. So you plug it in at this DSH. This one we're okay on, and you see that we have four feet. We're fine there. We determine that as the largest tree and is within diameter. So this tree is now cutting all these trees that are smaller. This is within 17 feet. We're measuring out again from DSH. I'm measuring slope distance. And I'm going with the slope out to 17 feet on this unit. That's right here. Everything in this circle that's smaller than that tree that is a cut species is getting cut. That tree's one, that tree's one. That's pretty easy over here. Let's come over here, take a look. Let's stop it. Um, here's where we hit an example of things getting a little tight on the three foot rule. Here's a hemlock, which is not a cut species. So it falls under the three foot rule. Three foot rule says this. You have a minor species if you have a tree over DSH. Within three feet, DSH again, of a cut species that's become ghost trees. Ordinarily, this tree would be cut by a bigger tree. Here on this plot, it is not. Being as down here, 
So you got one, almost two feet. And again, DSH, highest side DSH, and it's slope distance, not horizontal distance. You think it makes a difference? Let's come down over here and look. Here we have another example of the same rule. Here's a minor species, it's a hemlock. In order to count as anything, it's got to be seven inches or higher DSH. So again, if you're it's close, you better climb down. We're six inches up. You can see we've already marked because we've determined. It's actually right there, right? And we've got eight inches, so this is fine. This is a tree that counts. This is now within three feet of this tree. Both of these become ghost trees. Ignore them. Come down here. Oh, there's another one. Oh, it looks tight. Well, it is tight. It was tight enough to try to determine exactly where those points are on each tree. Six inches DSH there. Six inches DSH here. Very hard to actually tell because of things like this. Um, but anyways, if you just measure straight across, you'll find it's getting cut. It's, uh, it's three feet. It's under three feet. Well, down here, we hook this up at zero. We go down here. It is so tight that I can't make it touch at three feet. It was so tight, I got to go up to the one foot and go to four so that I can really have accuracy. There's four. There's one. That's three feet. Can I get them to touch? No. When this unit grows, give it a year or two. Yes. Right now, no. Some of the issues again with DSH. We've got things like that. And we have an issue over here with maximum DSH. We really, really had to get after it because it was so tight being it looked like 24 inches. Well, but you really got to go across at six inches here. It's somewhere about right here. Well, right here sort of curves up around this. Is this root collar? Thing is, it's got all this bark. Is it not? Where are you actually measuring from? Well, DBH would normally you would just measure from right here and four and a half feet up for DBH. Well, DSH. I'm going to try to wrap this tape around and I'm going to get it as accurate as I can and I need it horizontal all the way around the tree. Horizontal to the bowl. As accurate as we could we got to 23.9. It's now counted as a tree. That one there. 24 point, what was it Zach? 24. Two. 24.2. Almost exactly the same, these two trees, but this one is now a leaf tree and it can cut other trees. That one is now a ghost tree, it can't cut anything. What else did we have on this plot? Oh, let's see, we had a barrage on this one, didn't we? Species in here. There we go. There's our plot cutter. We mark it. We put flags up. We write on the flags. But up here we have a unit edge because this road is taken out. This road is traversed out of the sale so that we don't have to use it up here. So what I've got to determine with a with a uh, mirage plot is what I ordinarily do. Go ahead and leave that. So I'll plug in right there to the center of that stake, and then I got to measure out to the edge of the unit. Well, a couple years ago, we quit tagging along roads here. We used to tag so we had a distinct exact boundary along roads. We quit doing that. It became sort of controversial 
as to how we are going to determine the exact edge for cruising. The latest word is, you go off the trees of merchantable diameters. Here's one there, barely merchantable. This would be one of merchantable diameter and determine the edge of your unit. This one, okay. So I'm making a line between there and there. It's the edge of my unit. 17 and a half feet. I'm gonna keep going. 17 and a half more feet, because that's how far I am from the edge of the plot. Horizontal distance on this, not slope. There we go. Here's my mirage spot. This is on the other side of the road. I've marked it very well because I can see this being subjective depending who's doing it. I look back. I take the relescope out. I look at the same trees that were inside this original plot. I found two of them. I had to do limiting distance on one, but we'll get into that some other day. There's two trees that were in common. They fit in my 20 BAF basal area factor. And there are two trees out of the original plot. How do I mark them? Well, this was a count measure plot, meaning I measured all the true firs, this big one of them. So this was already tree number one. It's the only one. It's now also tree number two. Our direction is to put an M on them. There's an M on that one. I've got an M on this side. I put an M here just because I'm, I don't want someone to really know that was a mirage tree. This is a count tree. It now counts as two trees. Um, then we stand and we count. We count all those trees. We count all the count trees. Those are the dug firs. The mega trees, we measured diameter. I measured height on it. I did a grade on it. Um, tree one and two I have everything the same except the number of the tree on the card. Um, that's a plot for you. There's a little more to it, but just to give you an idea of some of the complexities that have been added, trying to get rid of some complexities, it's a, it's a balance to get this stuff the point where it's all going to do us a lot of good. I hope I have it right because now they've also asked that I swing around one more time and I count all the leaf trees and I write that down too. When you do that, that needs to be every tree that is over five inches dBH. They're interested in stuff that has nothing to do with volume, nothing to do with our timber cell cut. It has to do with the leaf, what density they wanted, etc. So we swing around and I count the dugs, I count the dug trees, I count the hemlocks that are big enough, there's a cedar that might be big enough, and I write that number down too. And then I, you know, you wonder, did you get it all? So you swing around three more times and look at it, because this one had a lot of these complexities on one plot. And you really hope you did. And you call it good and you move on to the next plot. You guys have a good day.